from San Jose, California, it's The Cube, covering Big Data Silicon Valley 2017. Welcome back everyone. We are at Big Data Silicon Valley, running in conjunction with Strata and Hadoop World in San Jose. Um, I'm George Gilbert, and I'm joined by Remy Stady. And uh, uh, Remy was uh, most recently uh, CEO and founder of Altiscale, uh, Hadoop as a service vendor, mm -hmm. uh, one of the one of the few out there, um, not part of uh, we're not part of one of the public clouds. And in keeping with all the great work they've done, they got snapped up by SAP. So, Remy, since we haven't seen you, I think on the cube since that's happened, why don't you catch us up with all that uh, all the the good work that's gone on between you and SAP since then. Sure, so the acquisition closed back in September, so it's been um, about six months. And it's been a very busy six months. Um, you know, there's just a lot of blocking and tackling that needs to happen, so you know, getting people on board, uh, getting new laptops, all that good stuff, but, but certainly a huge effort for us was to open up um, a data center in Europe. Um, we've long had demand, you know, to, to have that European presence. Uh, both because I think there's a lot of interest in Hadoop over in Europe itself, but also uh, large multinational companies based in the U.S., you know, it's important for them to have that um, European presence as well. So um, it was a natural, um, a natural thing to do as part of SAP, so kind of first order of business was to expand, expand over into Europe, so that was a, that was a big exercise. Um, we've actually had um, some good traction on the sales side, right? So we're, we're getting new customers, larger customers, more demanding customers, um, which, which has been a good challenge to the team. So let's, let's pause for a minute and uh, sort of unpack for folks what um, AltaScale offered, the, the core services sure. that, you know, that were here in the U.S. and now you've extended to Europe. Right, so our, our, our core platform is kind of Hadoop, Hive, and Spark you know, as a service in the cloud. And so we, we would offer HDFS and Yarn from Hadoop, um, Spark, and Hive, kind of well integrated. Um, and we would offer that as a cloud service. So you would just you know, get an account, log in, you know, store stuff in HDFS, run, run your Spark programs. And um, the way we encourage people to think about it is, is very often I think vendors have trained uh, folks in the big data space to think about nodes. You know, how many nodes am I going to get? What kind of nodes am I going to get? And, and the way you know, we really force people to think twice about about Hadoop and what Hadoop as a service means is to say, don't you know? Y why are you asking that? You don't need to know about nodes. Just store stuff, run your jobs. We worry about nodes, um, and uh, that you know. The, once people kind of understood, you know, just how much complexity that takes out of their lives, and how how that just enables them to truly focus on using these technologies to get business value rather than operating them. Um, you know, there, there's that aha moment in the sales cycle where people say, yeah, that's what I want. I want Hadoop as a service. Um, so, so that's been our value proposition from, from the beginning. Um, and it's remained, you know, quite constant. And even coming into SAP, that's not changing, you know, one bit. So, um, just to be clear then, it's like a lot of the operational responsibilities sort of you took control over so that when you say, like, don't worry about nodes, it's customer pours X amount of data into storage, which in, in your case would be HDFS, mm -hmm. and then compute is independent of that. Mm -hmm. They need, you spin up however many, or however um, however much capacity they need with Spark, for instance, to process it, or Hive. Right. Okay, so uh, and it all sounds on, like. And all on demand. Yeah, so it sounds like it's, uh, how close to like the BigQuery or, or Athena uh, services, Athena on AWS or BigQuery on Google, where you're not aware of any servers, um, either for storage or for compute. How? how um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a very good um, comparable. It's very much like Athena in BigQuery, where you just store stuff in tables and you issue queries, and you don't worry about how much com compute, you know, and 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 managing it. I think um, by throwing you know, spark in the equation, um, and, and yarn more generally, right, we can handle um, a, a broader uh, range of use cases. So, for example, you don't have to store file in, uh, data into tables, you can store them into HDFS files, which is good for processing log data, for example. Um, <coughs> and with spark, for example, you have access to a lot of machine learning algorithms that 
um, are a little bit harder to run in the context of, of, of say, Athena. So I think it's, it's, it's the same model in terms of it's, 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 it's you know, fully operated for you, but, but a, a broader platform in terms of its capabilities. Okay, so now let's talk about um, what SAP brought to the table and mm -hmm. how that changed the use cases that were appropriate for Altiscale. Um, you know, starting at the, at the data layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, I think the, we were certainly, um, uh, uh, from the business perspective, SAP um, brings a a large, very engaged customer base that um, you know is is eager to embrace um, kind of a data driven mindset and, and and culture and is is looking for a partner to to help them do that right and and so that's that's been great to be in that environment. Um, SAP has a number of uh, additional technologies that we've been integrating, you know, into the Altiscale offering. So one of them is Vora, which is uh, kind of an interactive SQL engine. Um, it also has a time series capabilities and graph capabilities and search capabilities. So it, so it has a lot of additive capabilities, if you will, to to what we have at Altiscale, and it also integrates um, very deeply into HANA itself. And so we now have uh, that VORA technology available as a service at, at Altiscale. Let me make sure, so that everyone understands, and so I understand too, is that so that you can issue queries from HANA, and they can, you know, beyond just simple SQL queries, they can um, handle the time series and predictive analytics and um, access data sort of seamlessly that's in Hadoop, or can it go the other way as well. It's both ways. So you can, um, you know, from HANA, you, you can essentially federate out in, in, into Vora and through that access data that's in in a Hadoop cluster. But but it's also the other way around. A lot of times there's there's an analyst who who really lives in the big data world, right? They're they're there in the in the Hadoop world, but they want to join in data that's sitting in a HANA database, you know, it might be dimensions in a warehouse or, you know, customer details even in a transactional system. And and so, you know, that Hadoop-based analyst, you know, now has access to data that's out in those HANA databases. Do you have some Lighthouse accounts that are working with this um, already? Um, e e Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I guess that was the diplomatic <laughs> way of saying yes, but uh, no comment. Um, all right, so so tell us more about SAP's big data stack mm -hmm. today and, and how that might evolve. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, of course now, um, especially in the cloud, we've got, you know, the, the, the Spark Hadoop, you know, Hive offering that that yep. we have, and then Vora sitting on top of that. There's um, uh, an, an offering called Predictive Analytics, which is Spark-based uh, um, predictive analytics. Uh, is that a, something that came from you, or is that? No, that's an SAP thing, right? Okay. So, and this is what's been great about about the acquisition, is that, that you know, SAP does, you know, does have a lot of technologies that, that we can now integrate. Um, and and, um, and 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 it brings new capabilities to to our customer base. So um, I, you know the, 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 those three are kind of pretty key. And then there's something called data services as well, which allows us to move data easily in and out of you know Hana and other data stores. Is it is is this the ability to federate queries between you know um, Hadoop and and Hana, and then m migration of the data between the stores? Does that, has that changed the economics of how much data people, uh, SAP customers uh, maintain and, and sort of what type of apps they can build on it now that they might, you know, might, it's economically sort of feasible to um, store a lot more data? Uh, well, yes and no. I mean, I, I think the context of Altiscale, both before and after the acquisition, is, is very often there is what you might call a big data source, right? It, it could be your web logs, it could be some, you know, IoT generated log data, it could be social media streams. You know, this is data that's, you know, doesn't have a lot of structure coming in. It's fairly voluminous. Um, it doesn't very naturally go into a SQL database, you know, and, and that's kind of the sweet spot for, for the big data technologies like Hadoop and Spark. So, um, th those data's 
you know come into your 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 big data environment you can um, you can transform it you can do some data quality on it you can, um, and and then you can eventually stage it out into something like a HANA data mart um, where it you know to make it available for reporting but but obviously there's stuff that you can do on the larger data set in the, in, in in Hadoop as well and so in a way, yes, you, you can now tame, if you will, those those huge data sources that you know weren't practical to put into um, you know into a HANA database. If you were to prioritize, in the context of sort of the application SAP applications SAP focus on, would you be sort of with the highest priority use case be IoT related stuff where you know it was just prohibitive to put it in HANA since it's mostly in memory, but you know SAP is exposed to tons of that type of data, which would seem to most naturally have affinity to Alta scale. Uh, yeah, so I mean IoT is a big initiative um, and and is a great use case, you know, for, for big data. But you know, financial the financial services industry as as another example, you know, is has is fairly down the path, you know, using using Hadoop technologies for many different use cases and, and so um, that's that's also an opportunity for us. So let me pop back up, you know, b before we have to wrap. Um, with with AltaScale as part of the SAP portfolio, um, have the two companies sort of gone to customers with a more uh, with more transformational options that you know you'll sell together? Yeah, we we have. In fact. Um, um, uh, AltaScale actually is no longer called AltaScale, right? We're we're part of a portfolio of products, uh, you know, known as the SAP Cloud Platform. So, you know, un under the Cloud Platform, we're the big data services. Um, the the SAP Cloud Platform, you know, is all about uh, business transformation and 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 business innovation, um, and and so we bring to that portfolio the ability to now bring. The types of data sources that I just discussed, you know, to bear on these transformative efforts, and so, you know, we, we fit, we we fit into um, some momentum SAP already has, right, to to help companies drive change. Okay, so, um, and along those lines, which might be, um, I mean, we know, financial services has been has has done a lot of work with, and and I guess telcos as well. Um, what are some of the the other verticals that are that look like they're primed to fall, you know, with this type of transformational well, uh, you, work. Well, yeah. You, so you mentioned one, which which I kind of call uh, manufacturing, right? And and there's there tends to be two kind of different use cases there. One one of them I call kind of the shop floor um, thing, where you're collecting a lot of sensor data, you know, out of a manufacturing facility with the goal yeah. of in increasing yield, typically. Um, so you've got the shop floor, and then you've got the, I think, more um, commonly discussed, you know, measuring stuff out in the field. You've got a product, you know, out in the field, bringing the telemetry back, um, doing things like predictive maintenance. So I think manufacturing, you know, is, is a, um, uh, is a big sector ready to go for for big data and healthcare is is another one um, you know people um, pulling together electronic medical records you know trying to combine that with clinical outcomes and and, um, and I think the big focus there is to drive towards kind of outcome based models even on the on the payment side and, and, and big data is is really valuable to try to assess you know kind of outcomes in an aggregate way. Okay, we're going to have to leave it on that note, but we will tune back in at, uh, I guess, Sapphire or TechEd, whichever of the SAP shows is coming up next to get an update. Sapphire's next, then TechEd. <laughs> okay, with that, um, this is George Gilbert and Ramey Stata. We will be back in a few moments with another segment. Uh, we're here at Big Data Silicon Valley, running in conjunction with Strata and Hadoop World. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be, we'll be right back.